Welcome back to Hoffman Tactical. Today's video, I'm going to share my experience and testing results with the Polymaker PA12 carbon fiber nylon. I have been using this nylon for a few months now and have printed a complete AR-15 upper and lower from it. My testing consists of tensile and impact testing of both dry and wet samples, annealed and unannealed. I have not done any layer adhesion testing yet, so that is still an unknown. My overall impression of the PA12 carbon fiber has been good, but there are some concerns we will need to cover. It prints great without warping on my Prusa i3 MK3 with the nozzle at 280 degrees Celsius and the print bed at 45 degrees Celsius. I have been using Magigoo and a powder coated satin steel uh, PEI steel sheet for the bed. Because of concerns with creep, I have been annealing all of my functional parts. This does cause sh some shrinkage and can result in warping. I don't know how necessary this process is yet as I have not done any creep testing. Stay tuned for the creep testing. That should be very interesting. The PA-12 is interesting because of its hydroscopic properties. Other nylons, such as PA-6, when used in a humid environment, absorb significant amounts of water. This results in a loss of tensile strength and stiffness. In some cases of some nylons, such as the Toloman glass fiber nylon and push plastic carbon fiber nylon, the loss of stiffness is so great that it makes the nylon unusable for many parts. The PA-12 absorbs much less water and maintains its stiffness even in a humid environment. That's pretty cool. Because the PA-12 remains stiffer by itself, it does not need as much fiber fill to be stiffer. Hence, it has less than 10% carbon fiber. This is great because unlike other high fiber content nylons, such as the Polymaker PA-6 carbon fiber or the Coex glass fiber nylon, the PA-12 carbon fiber has a very smooth surface finish and great print resolution. Also, because of the low fiber content, it doesn't have that rough surface which can bother your skin and get fibers in it, so it is good for things like pistol grips and handguards, which is really nice, and a problem I have with quite a few carbon fiber nylons. For my tensile test, I printed six groups of samples. These were split into three subgroups. One was left as printed, one was annealed in air, and the other was annealed in oil. Each subgroup was split again, half the samples being stored in my dry box, and the other half being allowed to absorb moisture. The annealing process is to heat the samples in my filament dryer to 185 degrees Fahrenheit, approximately, for two hours. This is the same process for annealing all of my nylons and is recommended by most manufacturers. The oil annealing was done as an experiment to see if the oil inhibited the absorption of water. Check out my other video on here on YouTube on the Toloman glass fiber nylon for more detail on that. And while we're here, I'll make a note. If you aren't on YouTube, congratulations, and if you are on YouTube, you might want to check out my account on odyssey.com, where YouTube can't censor me. So please do that, odyssey.com, great site, and all of my content is out there. Normally, I allow the samples to sit in the open and absorb water from the ambient environment, but because it's winter right now and quite dry, I had to place the samples in a sealed bag with a small amount of water for a week to ensure they were wet and fully exposed to humidity for long enough to absorb the needed amount of moisture for this test. The impact samples were treated the same way, except I only had one annealed sample that was left dry and no oil annealed samples. So the scope of the impact testing was less than the tensile testing, but sufficient for our analysis. For reference, I'll be using the Polymaker PLA Pro as a benchmark when comparing test results. Unfortunately, I was unable to properly test the dry samples. This is because my test setup is only strong enough to pull 450 pounds, or about 15,000 pounds per square inch for the sample size I am using. The dry samples I tried to test were stronger than 15,000 PSI, which is incredibly strong, but more than I could test with my current machine. Fortunately, I was still able to get stiffness data from the dry sample I tried to test. The PA-12 carbon fiber nylon exhibited no necking and very little yield before failure. This is typical of other filled nylons. This bar chart displays the ultimate tensile strength of the PA-12 carbon fiber. On the left is the dry sample. Keep in mind that, that the 15,033 PSI strength you're seeing there is a minimum. The material is actually stronger than this. The other values should be accurate. You can see that the wet samples are weaker than the dry samples, but still incredibly strong. At over 12,000 PSI, the, weight, the wet PA-12 is stronger than most other filaments. Something interesting is how the annealing affects the strength. The annealed samples were very close to the same strength of the unannealed samples, and a little weaker, if anything. This is opposite of what I have observed with other nylons. Normally, annealing improves strength. 
the oil and yield samples were a little stronger, and this is probably because the oil prevented a certain amount of moisture absor absorption. The Young's modulus, or stiffness, is shown on this chart here. The results are very similar. The PA-12 has remained significantly stiffer than the PLA Pro, even after absorbing water, which is great. The annealed samples here are slightly stiffer than the raw samples, but not enough to make any determinations. Pretty much, annealing had almost no effect on either the strength or stiffness of the samples after they absorbed water. That's really interesting, not sure why. Impact resistance is also interesting. After absorbing water, the impact resistance actually went down a bit, not up. With other nylons, such as the Toloman glass fiber nylon, absorbing water normally makes made the nylon weaker, but more impact resistant. I'm not sure what these opposite results indicate, but they are interesting. You will also observe that the annealed sample had less impact resistance than the raw samples. This is typical of annealing nylon. Even though the impact resistance is not incredible, it's still better than the PLA Pro. All of the samples broke with a rough surface free of shattering, typical of filled nylons. I would say that the PA-12 carbon fiber nylon has good impact properties and is not a brittle filament. There are two areas of concern with this filament. The first one is heat resistance. The attraction of any carbon fiber nylon over PLA Pro is the improved resistance to heat. The Polymaker PLA Pro has a heat deflection temperature of about 58 degrees Celsius according to Polymaker's technical data sheets. The PA-12 carbon fiber nylon has a heat deflection temperature of 105 degrees Celsius and the PA-6 carbon fiber nylon has a heat deflection temperature of a whopping 173 degrees Celsius. You can see that the PA-12 has a significantly lower heat deflection temperature than the PA-6, yet it still appears good looking at these numbers. However, if you look at the heat deflection temperature curves for each of these filaments, you will see that the PA-12 begins to deflect at around only 45 degrees Celsius, the PA-6 at around 90 degrees Celsius, and the PLA Pro around 55 degrees Celsius. The concern is that even though the PA-12 carbon fiber retains its strength at elevated temperatures, it may begin to creep. And this leads us into the next potential problem. Creep is a plastic deformation at stress levels significantly below the yield strength of the material. I have not yet done any creep testing with the PA-12, so I don't know how much of an issue it is. I did observe some possible creep issues around the buffer tower on my Oracle build, but this is inconclusive. With other nylons I have tested, creep was a huge problem until I annealed the parts. Whether or not this is a problem with the PA-12 will be most interesting. With the added possibility of elevated temperatures allowing creep, it definitely looms as a potential problem. The alternative to a lower fiber content PA-12, such as the Polymaker PA-12 carbon fiber, is a higher fiber content PA-6, or equivalent. PA-6 carbon fiber from Polymaker and the Coex glass fiber nylon are two potential options. As noted above, they do suffer from poor surface finish. Layer adhesion and impact resistance are also a concern because of the high carbon content. So despite these drawbacks, high carbon content PA6 nylons are still going to be the best option for a high temperature application. But the great surface finish and resistance to water absorption makes the PA12 an attractive option for frames and receivers. I, I mean garden sprayers. The Polymaker PA12 carbon fiber is extremely expensive, but other companies are also making similar products and I think the price will come down with time. Other options are the Prusament PA11 carbon fiber nylon, the Fiberology PA12 carbon fiber nylons, and the 3D X-Tech PA12 carbon fiber filaments. In closing, I think the PA12 carbon fiber has a lot of potential, but should be treated as an experimental option. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll catch you guys again next week.